Shanahan must see ghosts in these type of games because this is the third game this season where it was pretty clear that the Niners had the advantage, even though they did, I didn't think that they played great. They played good enough to beat Seattle. I actually, uh, I actually wrote in our Discord that you know the, the Niners aren't playing great, but the best thing about it is neither is Seattle. Like they were both just playing blah football. And so Niners are still winning, and then we get to that last drive. I, I have the I have the play calls up because I wanted to remember it correctly. So the Niners have the ball in their own thirty-seven. McCaffrey with maybe his best burst all game long, eleven yards. Next play, McCaffrey gets stuffed, but then there's a defensive holding. So first down. Niners are across the 50. So they're in Seattle territory. Loses a yard, timeout Seattle, and then Shanahan goes to the play action. I understand. I mean, even Greg Olson was calling for it. And I'm not even saying that was the wrong call. Like we've said over and over and over, Shanahan knows so much more about football in his left pinky than I know in my entire brain. But, the, what the facts point out is that he is often dialing up either the wrong thing or the players are in this situation where they're not actually executing what, what he's calling. Had he run there, Seattle would have, Seattle would have uh, I think they would have had to burn the second timeout because there was still three minutes left, uh, about three minutes left. So then... They, they would have run another play, and if they would have run a running play, and even if they would have had to punt, then you kick it to Seattle, and they have less than two minutes left. Instead, the way that they did it, uh, Seattle had uh, one timeout left, and they had the ball uh, with two minutes and 45 seconds. Now, you know, maybe if the new punter O'Donnell, you know, gives him a little bit of a better punt, whatever. Those are, those are also things in, in, in this scenario. But my point is not about, you know, Shanahan lost the game. My point is, is that this dude, he has had these situations time and time again in his career, but this season that is fresh on our minds and whatever he is dialing up is not the right thing for his offense. And it's just frustrating because had he actually gone conservative and they would have Seattle would have had one timeout and the ball with with two minutes left, that is preferable than what, what the Niners allowed them, which was an extra 45 seconds and an extra timeout. And Gino just he did his thing and, and, and they lost the game. But whatever that is, that just disconnection from the offense and, and him calling plays with the lead late in the game. There was a stat that said the Niners gave up the most points in the last two minutes of the game in, in the NFL this year. Um, that was also, that also had to kind of be uh, in the back of their mind about, okay, you know, we, we kind of have to make this difficult because this is what we do this year. And they didn't. So that, that is there. I'm not accusing anybody of being bad at anything. I'm just saying, this dude has been in this moment a few times and you reverse that moment in all three games or in two out of the three games, we our outlook on this season is, is much different. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I have just recently started the book that you keep going back to. And again, what I took away from that first and foremost is it kind of, jives with what I have always believed that it's the gems and Joes, not the X's and O's. And the thing about like today, for example, just as an example, I don't know it, it, when you tell me the way the game had been playing out. If you tell me that we got one play to seal the game, do I want to put it in Brock's hands or do I want to put it in the offensive line's hands? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you it's if Brock is the guy, then those are the you know, he needs to make a play there. I mean, it's 
you know, I, I, I know it's not I, I, apples I would, to apples. I, it's not apples like to the, apples, but, but you look at the end of the bu- Buffalo game, they put that game in Josh Allen's hands, absolutely. and um, <laughs> and he brought it home. I mean, so did, I don't did know. You re- I mean, and did I'm not you saying watch that play. Which the, one? The, the Debo, uh, the play action to Debo play. Yeah, yeah. So either it looked like, D- like it looked like the defensive back changed the route for Debo slightly. I think mm-hmm. he was supposed to actually go a little deeper, but this the the defensive back kind of forced yeah. him to make mm-hmm. his move a little bit sooner. Routed him. Mm-hmm. You, you see, you saw a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, Brock's throwing the ball." Uh, you know, he, he expected uh, Wemby to 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 be there to make that catch, and <laughs> and um, it was, but it was a miscommunication. And I don't know. Again, we, we're going back to sort of, you know, dialing that play up. Mm-hmm. The guy who was absolutely in his bag and on fire in that game was Jennings. Mm-hmm. Debo had very little to do with what they were doing offensively. I don't know if he was bottled up. I don't know if the game plan went away from him. That is not stuff that we can necessarily see on the television mm-hmm. screen. Um, but to me, because what you just said, it's 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 about the players over the plays. Two people on the nine in the Niners offense, unless you were you were designing a run for Brock, because there were moments where he was actually very successful on his feet. Got to get the ball to CMC. Got to get the ball to JJ. And they dialed up the play for Debo. I'm sure in the back of Shanahan's mind, he very much trusts Debo to make a play. But he and Brock are, are off on, on that throw. You know what's interesting? is in that book that we're talking about. Uh, we always hear the story that Shanahan picked on Ayuk in his rookie year. And uh, and and really was hard on Ayuk, you know, you know, to be a professional. But what Mike Silver writes is that uh, he was the same w- with Debo, and to mm-hmm. to the point where Debo was was really frustrated at f- feeling picked on in in a sense. Um, I I every time I see Debo on the field, I'm like, man, he's like very close to doing something, breaking one or whatever. But they they ran. The couple of wide runs with him today that just didn't really work. Uh, he wasn't really a fixture in the passing game. You know, he's probably the one who was actually hurt more by Ayuk being gone because he just gets more attention. And so all of those things being said, I know Shanahan knows that, but still he dialed up that play for Debo instead of JJ. Maybe he's worried about JJ's speed and not being able to, to get out on the break as well. Whatever it was. Also, Pretty Ricky Pearsall was a no show today. Mm-hmm. I I'm not I I saw him on the field like one time I think. So all he, the offense is sputtering. He makes a decision that was that was the play call. It's almost like he's just befuddled in these moments about what the right thing is, and uh, some of that is on your quarterback. Some of that is on. The play call too, though I I didn't. I, I was kind of frustrated when I saw what the design was because I was like, man, Debo has not done anything all day long, and may, maybe he just maybe he saw something that said, if we just do this correctly, Debo could take it to the house, and I'm sure that was part of the the algorithm there. But yeah, just that that was that was frustrating to me because in the back of my mind, I was doing the math problem, which was run, run, two minute warning. Gino one timeout it makes it so much harder because you're the team that is actually playing with the lead knowing that they can't even tie with a field goal I think that was the moment to play conservatively but that's just often not Shanahan's mm-hmm. game 